And yeah, I was a producer from the beginning. I didn't ever want to be a rapper. My brother, Lord Infamous, was the rapper. I made the beats. We were just in my room at my mama's house, and I would make the beats, and he would rap over it. And then one day, he's like, I don't feel like writing a second verse. Why don't you write a second verse? And I'm like, I don't want to write a second verse. <laughs> and then I went on and wrote the second verse, and that's when I became a rapper. Thank God I wrote that second verse. It's going down. I didn't even look at it like I wanted to be a producer. I just wanted to make music. When we got to the point where we was making that EP, that's when I really started considering myself a producer because I never used the word producer. I was just like, man, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm making beats. But then when I got that EP and it was time to do the credits on the inside, I looked at other people's CD and I was like, oh, okay, executive producer. I think that's the one who put the money behind it. And uh, the producer is the one, okay, I got this. Okay, so produced by, <laughs> and that was the first time I considered myself a producer was with that EP. But up to that, I was just a dude that made music. I was in high school and uh, brought out the EP, The Serial Killers. It went from that to uh, me becoming a DJ. So I basically just became a DJ to get our music out there because the EP was cool, but I was just selling it at my school. And I was like, it gotta be a way to get this out here more. So I started making mixtapes. Volume one through three was just all other people's songs. And then when volume four came, I would mix in one of my songs. But volume 12 is when it hit off. Then when volume 16 came, volume 16 did so good that that's when we got the record deals. When I got to volume 16, volume 16 was doing so good that I had told Juicy, I was like, look, man, we got to, uh, we gotta do something. We can't we can't just keep selling these tapes out to stereo stores. Like we gotta get this the sound out nationwide before somebody else steal it. So we took forty five hundred dollars and we went in the studio, in a real studio, not my mama house, made the first three six mafia album called Mystic Styles. That album came out and it uh debuted on, on Billboard, just straight independent. We did everything ourselves, passing out CDs, we were giving away the whole CDs. So we tried to get a record deal. We were sending the records to we were sending that, that album to Relativity and Sony and all these guys, they was turning it down. So then we brought out the second album, which is called The End. And that album did even better debuted on uh, Billboard. And then that's when those same record labels called us back and offered us a deal. And I was like, well, look, you could have got me for cheap at first, but I was like, now you can't get me for cheap. Like, I'm already doing good right now. I don't really need y'all no more. I was producing from the beginning because what happened was my daddy, he put me in uh, organ lessons and he made me start uh, taking organ lessons which I think is what created the creepiness in my music because that was the first instrument I played. And I still have the same organ in my studio right now from childhood. A lot of people in Memphis, like our competitors that was doing really good back in the day, they changed up their sound when they got a uh, nationwide distribution. They started putting a bunch of like happy music and keys and guitars and making their music all pretty because they called it the nationwide sound. They used to say that we didn't have a nationwide sound. I just kept to that same sound, you know? I didn't know, I didn't want to do nothing different because I was like, this shit is hard, man. And I was like, people love this. Like, I don't want to do no nationwide sound. I said, yeah, we'll put some songs on here with some serious subjects. But I was like, for the most part, man, we finna have all us, man, a hundred. Just nuttiness. How it, how it goes for me is I'll sit down and I'll listen to the artist number the biggest song but i don't really go by that i just listen to that just to see what what they got out radio wise but then i go into their op their albums and i look for the most the most underground is one on there so like when i just produce a trippy red album trippy red never did no crump songs no three six mafia type songs or any of that and i was like man trippy red got a crazy fan base though like and when you just look at trippy red i was like you know he just got that rock rowdy look and feel about him i was like man I, that's what i think he need i walked up in the studio and i played some stuff that was like his more signature sound but then i was like i'm gonna go i'm gonna go and try one i brought him. Hit him, motherfucker, hit him, motherfucker. He started listening to it. He said, uh, 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 turn the mic on, turn the mic on. And he just went in there 
and he just like, you gonna die. Hit a motherfucker, hit a motherfucker. You gonna die. My, I was saying hit a motherfucker because it was a remake of an old 3 6 Mafia song. He thought that I was saying kill a motherfucker. So he was like, you gonna die. Kill a motherfucker. And I'm like, I'm not saying kill a motherfucker, but like, yeah, whatever works. <laughs> if that's what you think, and that's what's working for you, go it. You know, but when you're dealing with some guys like a drink or something, you're like, he already know what he need and you know he know what's 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 uh you, you can't really tell him what's missing on his album it's just gonna be dope anyway i didn't think he was gonna pick that beat because it was totally totally different but like i said when people call me to come to the studio for them this use they usually looking for something different for all the producers out there don't make this mistake because i made this mistake a bunch of times i would go to the studio and i would take beats that sound like what that artist does. I thought about it and I was like, why would they call DJ Paul to the studio and not want a DJ Paul beat? Like, what the hell am I thinking? <laughs> Yo, don't make that mistake, man. If they call you to the studio, obviously it's because they like what you're doing. You know, and stick to that. I was always a fan of horror music. I love horror stuff. As you can see, I got Michael Myers back there. I'm getting a Jason built as we speak. Uh, they're building me a Jason now to stand next to him. And I got creepy shit all over my house. You know, I'm just in, I just was always into that. I'm a big Rob Zombie fan. I love his music, his movies and his music. And I saw he had all these figurines of all these creepy uh, toys and stuff in his house. And I was like, man, I gotta do that. So between studying serial killers, Ted Bunny, uh, David Breckowitz, all these guys um, and being a fan of horror movies and having this organ and just growing up in Memphis period because Memphis is crazy as hell. It rains a lot, it's dark and it's gloomy. Uh, we was the robbery capital and we was the unemployment capital which kind of goes hand in hand when you think about it. And just with all of that, I think that's just what did it. Hey man. Now, everything sounds like 3-6 Mafia, man. You know, like, I don't know where hip hop would be. Music, period, because 3-6 Mafia even influenced EDM, trap EDM. Uh, I even hear country music with some of our beat patterns, this and that. I produce some country music with some of our beat patterns and this and that. Uh, before us, it wasn't no nothing like this. You know, the beat patterns more like, do, 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 do. and like, it was different. Then we came in, do, 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 do. you know, it was like totally different the tempos and the chants. Like you had chants, but it wasn't chants like what we were saying. Demanding and commanding and telling people to do this. Hit a motherfucker and tell the club up and do this and do that. A lot of instructions going on, like a drill sergeant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I named the kid the Mafia Changed Music, man, because we, we really did. <laughs>